Welcome to episode 160 of the Necronama.com. The Necronama.com is proud to announce that we've partnered with the Horror Writers Association and the Stanley Hotel and Gemma Amore and Laurel Hightower to bring you the official StokerCon pre-party. We want you to join us on May 10th, 2022 at the iconic Stanley Hotel where horror authors including Stephen Graham Jones, Gabino Iglesias, Haley Piper, Gemma Amore, and Laurel Hightower will be reading some of their works. Additionally, the No Sleep podcast will perform a one-hour live version of their award-winning horror fiction podcast. There will be meet and greets, ghost hunting, and a lot of drinking with authors. You're not going to want to miss it. A link to ticket information and room packages is available in the liner notes of this episode. The Necronama.com is now a proud affiliate of Libsyn, one of the top podcast hosting networks in existence. See this episode's show notes for our unique promo code to get up to two free months of podcasting services with Libsyn. Get your show on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, Get critical audience building stats and all the support you need to sound your best. They even do video. Bring your podcast to life and have your voice heard here, there, everywhere with Libsyn. Check our show notes for the unique promo code and get podcasting. Now in their 18th year, Fright Rags has been bringing you the best in horror apparel and accessories since 2003 offering a wide range of products for your favorite creature features, slasher flicks, and cult classics. Officially licensed collections include titles like John Carpenter's The Thing, The Evil Dead, Creep Show, Jaws, The Halloween Franchise, and so many more. Head on over to fright-rags.com. Make sure to sign up for their SMS and email newsletter to never miss a drop. Listeners get 10% off when they use the code NECRO10, all caps, at checkout. I am James Sabata, horror author, screenwriter, co-host of the podcast you're listening to right now, and I completely forgot how Lake Placid went when I agreed to do this episode. And I'm Don Guillory, author, historian, educator, co-host of the podcast, and uh, my hat is like a shark fan. Of course it is. So, <laughs> Thomas Brungard is back again. Welcome. Against, welcome. against my better judgment for once. <laughs> so, uh, so, Thomas, hi, welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm just now finding out that I'm not the only guest you ever have. I didn't know you did other episodes. We do, yeah. <laughs> Occasionally. Not often. Well, out thank of you our... for having me. Thank you for doing Deep Blue Sea. I've been asking for this for two years. You have. You, you literally mm -hmm. have. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been saying, when are we going to do Deep Blue Sea, James? When is it going to happen? That's also true. And I have repeatedly asked for a week off, and yet here I am. So... <laughs> Uh, Thomas, let's, let's start with telling listeners about yourself, whether you want to or not. <laughs> sure. Uh, my name's Thomas. I, uh, I, I make media stuff for the internet right now. I'm working on a project that's going to be screened at some film festivals and then it's actually going to stream on Amazon prime. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, Congratulations. It, thank you. It's that sounded genuine for once. Uh, it's not, uh, <laughs> It, it's 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 formatted like a documentary, but it's it's kind of like a mockumentary, though it's not really mocking anything in particular. Um, <laughs> it's kind of an allegory for it, for purgatory. It's a fun new look at purgatory. Um, it, it's called it's called they can't see us if we're not alive doing the Lord's work, and um, yeah, it's going to be available online uh, in the in the near future at uh, they can't see us dot com. Fantastic. Yeah, thank you. I didn't know any of that going into this, so that was <laughs> interesting. <clears throat> um, 
So why why have you been trying so hard to get us to do? I genuinely love Deep Blue Sea. It's one of my favorite movies. Uh, I saw it in movie theaters when I was a kid, and uh, I, you know I didn't realize it had this huge following, and 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 people in the horror community love it because um, everybody in my life that I've made watch it has told me how terrible it is. So. For me, I just wanted people to see it the kind of way that I wanted people to see Splice and all the other shitty movies we've talked about together. But um, <laughs> There is no shitty movie. It's just what you like and what you don't like. So this is like the second Tom Jane movie we've done and the second Sam Jackson movie we've done. And I thought we need to do a Michael Rappaport movie. So, <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> Deep Blue Sea. There's not enough of those. We should. <laughs> I celebrate let's, the man's entire Let's make entire sure catalog. not to tag him because that could end badly. No, well, it'll end well, and we'll get a lot of hits either way, no matter what he thinks of it. I feel like we could have got him on this episode. I feel like we're only a couple we degrees are. away from Michael Rappaport. We could pause right now and go see. <laughs> He's on well, camp. we're back. Be <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Rappaport is... Uh, I'd forgotten he was in the film. I haven't seen it since it came out until now. And uh, and yeah, I, I totally forgot, so I was excited he was there. And then I'm so used to Michael Rappaport being the way that, you know, he is online that I was like, I want to see that person play this role. Like, I want (laughs) to splice him back in. Just start cursing at the sharks and (laughs) tell them what fucking idiots they are. (laughs) And then, like, have Sam Jackson be Sam Jackson and just just really kick up the cursing in this film. I feel like it was necessary. There's a lot of sharks and a lot of death and, and not nearly enough curse words. There's some great like death scenes in this movie. I know, mm-hmm. James, that you you didn't like this movie too much, but there. Whoa, whoa, whoa! It's not that I didn't <laughs> like this movie. It's uh, and and when you I said say something that... about you hated it, that's what you said. <laughs> that's not so what I said. One enough. of the worst God, movies it. you've ever seen in your life. Everyone associated with this movie should have had their SAG card taken away. Well, from what he told me was that the, the cast was too diverse and that it should have been more white driven, like the film Jaws. And I was like, I just this. couldn't <laughs> identify with all the uh, yeah, no. Um, <laughs> so I, I feel like this was, this was overhyped for me. I don't know that okay. it's the whole horror community, but a lot of my friends in the horror community treat this one level below Jaws as like the greatest shark movie made other than Jaws. And, and so then it wasn't that I didn't like it. It was that I was like, huh, that's weird. I wonder why it's this one. And, right. and that's, that's really it. So Don, go for it. Well, no, I was going to say, because we talked about this before we started recording, and and my issue with that is when you start saying, you know, something is number one, this one's number two, but you don't have that many things that go off of. No disrespect to the Sharknado crowd, because I know you guys are rabid fans, but the Sharknado movies are some of the worst shark movies ever made, and especially when you have Jaws at the top. I would put Sharknado, like, below... Uh, open water that's how much i don't care for the sharknado movies sorry any open water fans that movie sucked as well it was very long <laughs> boring never like, saw it th- there was really no payoff uh Don, I, I wrote that movie spoiler alert they <laughs> die um <laughs> i don't know I feel how like you that get happens a, in a lot of shark movies I, I don't know how you can get a two-hour movie out of a couple that just went missing you know oh let's go ahead and invent some dialogue where they're floating around for two hours um so anyway, <laughs> um, the, the 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 issue when you're talking about Jaws is the the best, or this this movie is the next best movie since Jaws, right? That's real easy to say when there aren't that many good shark movies. I would say, yeah, this this fits. But if you're going to grade it and say, let's say we're we're curving the grade, and Jaws is a 100, this movie would probably be a 70, 72. And then something like 47 meters down would be around as, you know, maybe a 70, a 65. And then you keep going. Um, yeah, and then bad CGI sharks is like a 92. Yeah, I agree. But it, it's still one of those things where you look at it and the, and the comparison isn't fair because I get why people like the movie. It's fun. It's dumb. Uh, it, it, it's funny. But. You know, it, it's it's not comparable to Jaws with the storytelling, with the tension, anything like that. But I get why people would like it. Like they're like myself. I love Predator. It is not a good movie. It is a shitty movie. It is a stereotypical action movie from beginning to end. The only thing they didn't have were boobs in the movie, unless you count Arnold when he takes his shirt off. But you know, those are chest. I do. It's different. Um, There's no boob in this movie. Oh, well, sort of. 
Well, I mean, okay. But Tom Jane, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I, I I get why people would feel that way. I don't feel that way about the movie. I like it, but I wouldn't compare it to Jaws because I think this is definitely more action driven than suspense and horror driven. Um, so you know. Well, and I, I think that was kind of my issue with it. It's not that I didn't like it, because I did enjoy it. It just didn't live up to what I was expecting. Um, mm-hmm. With that said, like, as a straight creature feature, it's pretty fucking great. So I just, I kind of wish that I hadn't hadn't heard the hype train. I disagree when Don said it was funny, because nobody was laughing on Aquatica that day. You know, it was very <laughs> serious. Very serious situation out there in the middle of the ocean. I was laughing. The sharks <laughs> were laughing. <laughs> And and what you're saying about how it's compared to Jaws, and I don't think it should be compared to Jaws at all, because to me, this isn't even a shark movie. Because if you look at the movie, like from just a broad point of view, it is Jurassic Park on the water. Yeah. I, I call yeah. this movie Frank Jurassic Water Park, because that's all it is. It's the <laughs> yeah. same exact plot of Jurassic Park, just they're on I love the that. water. Um, if you had told it, me that before I watched this, I think I would have liked it even more. So there you go. But I'll, I'll, I'll make up. I'll make up a, a, a new poster for the movie and call it well, Jurassic James, Water Park. When was the first time you've seen the movie? I saw it when it came out. I uh, okay. I think I well like I think when it came to video, I saw it. Okay. Because I know yeah. I didn't watch it in the theater. I watched it like I remember the the friend's house I was at watching it. So I, I think like right when it came out on rental, but I haven't watched it since. But a, a movie like The Meg is closer to Jaws just from a story point of view, because this sure. movie is, is all about genetic testing and, and they're creating these sharks. It's not a shark that is just there in the ocean. You know what I mean? So it's, right. it's not the same thing as Jaws at all. And, and I think that's where I got stuck. But enough about whether I liked it, because it doesn't matter. I've covered lots of movies I don't like, and I liked this. <laughs> but, uh, you know, let's uh, let's jump into the actual social commentary. And Thomas, you're the guest. So I suppose I'll let you lead the way, as terrified as I am. I think we're looking at the same thing we looked at in Jurassic Park when we talked about that movie, is that the sharks are basically raptors. They are, they are tearing apart this park and killing all these people and... Um, you know, pack hunting and all that stuff. But the real root of it all is is the idea of playing God. And, and mm-hmm. Stellan Skarsgård character is, is really annoying in this movie. But he always talks about how, like, God didn't create these things. You know, I did. Because they're trying to find a cure for Alzheimer's, which is what they're always trying to do in these movies. It's always something. Um, and, you know, then you, really we just have to have that conversation again of, is it worth creating these mega sharks <laughs> so we can try and, and cure alzheimer's i guess and capture mm-hmm. lightning in a bottle and that's one of the things that i always wonder about like with something like this do they throw that in so that while you're like oh this person's fucking terrible because they did this you're like well but there's a good cause and then you're supposed to root for them because i feel like i never get there i'm always like yeah you're still a shitty person that caused this so <laughs> All the best intentions, right? I think that's what it is. And then your entire Aquatica gets burned to the water. But I am actually legitimately fascinated by that line because so much of the different uh, medical advances we've made over the years, people had to do unethical stuff to get there. And, And that's not great, but it's reality. And it did save lives and whatever else. And so I'm always just fascinated by that whole conversation or even how it plays into like, uh, like like nuclear weapons and like, did it save the war? You know, like, would more people be dead? And I don't know. I mean, those are long conversations I don't want to have right now. But I'm saying I'm fascinated by that line <laughs> of thought. Well, so who's the, who's the villain in this in this movie? Is it the sharks? Is it Saffron Burroughs? Is it Sam Jackson? Like, who is who is the the person? Who is the catalyst for all this? It's capitalism, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the, fucking well, capitalism. It, it's in all honesty, I mean, it's 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 that idea of one like like the two of you brought up playing God because science is not the problem. And I remember there was this this nice little uh, I guess you could say it was a meme, but it was saying science shows you what's possible. Humanity show you why it might not be a good idea. And so, you know, they were using resurrecting dinosaurs as the reason. And then the person on the other side was explaining, like, this is the shit that can happen if 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 you do do this. Yes, we have the possibility to do it. But no, um, or in one of the Star Trek movies, I can't remember which one, whether it was Generations or or First Contact or what. But Picard made some comment about, you know, 
our technology or excuse me, our humanity has not caught caught up to our technology. Pointing out that we've got all this cool shit, but we're still going to fuck up. We still don't exactly understand how we should be conducting ourselves throughout in the, in this case and throughout the universes. Um, so as far as villain, I think it, it would really just be humans, uh, humanity's ego. Like I, I have the possibility to do this shit. I'm going to do it. I'm not going to think about the consequences. I'm going to think about the benefits to it, which for Sam Jackson, it's like, shit, we already spent $200 million, you know, trying to get this thing going and we're pissing our money away. Stock price is going to be shit on Monday because of this bad news. And then Saffron Burroughs uh, character, um, Dr. McAllister says, oh, well, come with me and and check out this, you know, the experiment we're going to do. And, and you'll you'll definitely be getting your money's worth. You know, we'll all be millionaires, you know, the whole spiel. Uh, where she's she's uh, uh, playing into his ego as far as being a businessman and being a multimillionaire or whatever. Um, but then also her ego of like, I'm going to prove you that we're good enough to do this shit. I don't want my science. I don't want my experiment shut down. I don't want my scientific pursuits uh, uh, curbed at all. So, I mean, that's that's what it comes down to is is the ego and the in some cases, the super ego of human beings that, you know, we know when some shit shouldn't be done and we fucking do it anyway. Story of my life. (laughs) Thomas, do you have anything to add to that? No, I agree. I mean, it's, it's one of those things where I've, it's just that Jeff Goldblum line from Jurassic Park. Everybody always memes, but you know, they just because they can do it doesn't mean they should do it. And as much as I love seeing these giant sharks, it was probably a bad idea. And yeah, it's just scientists pushing their agenda, just like what we're living in right now. You know, all these scientists and the government, you know, pushing their vaccines on us. Right, guys? <laughs> we are going to anyway. get the wrong crowd if you say some <laughs> shit like that. James said he wanted more downloads, so I'm trying to open up to a big They don't audience. download. They just listen to Joe Rogan. Oh, Didn't, yeah. Well, OK, fair. <laughs> Plus, Q hasn't told them about our show yet. <laughs> Just tell them my name is Joe Rogan. I don't care. Everything comes back to Star Trek. Gosh. (laughs) (laughs) Terrible joke. Uh, The more I thought about it, like you just asked, like, who's the villain in this? And I kind of like that there's no there's no guy that sticks out as like super evil who's there. Like creature features have a tendency to give you like this one guy who's clearly just a terrible piece of shit. And like you have to fear him as well as the creature. And and I kind of like that that doesn't really happen here. You know, we get to just just care about the sharks. I don't know. I was a little afraid of LL Cool J. Very. uh, <laughs> He had some good kills in this movie and it was it was very resourceful. <laughs> I don't know. Was, which like, which was, you want to know a little bit about his backstory, which which part of like when I, he went I to mean, a little bit school? more about his backstory, because the only thing that, you know, is that I guess he had been an alcoholic. And he immediately, as soon as the bottle, oh, I guess this is a sign from God. You know, <laughs> but he's also very <laughs> religious. So I'm like, what? I'm like, because he does that whole thing where he starts shooting the videos. Like, you know, I, you know, I, I live for the for the pulpit and I live for the bottle. And I'm like, so basically, he was an alcoholic who found God. But I remember him drinking earlier in the film, so that's what it took to break. Like, there was there was no time for him to have this moment. Like, it seems as though if they'd done the story right. That bottle would have shown up when he was making his goodbye, uh, his goodbye video. And then he stops like something interrupts him from drinking the bottle. And then he would have said something like, oh, I think that was a sign from God. You know, that would have made more sense. You know, if if you're talking about he possibly struggled with alcoholism or struggled with drinking or had a family history of it or something, as opposed to, you know, within the first few explosions or, or whatever unsettling moment that he has where the, the entire kitchen is destroyed. He's like, well, I guess this is a sign from God. Oh, let me pop this <laughs> bottle open. <laughs> that Again, that's why I say it's a fun, stupid movie because there's a lot of stuff that doesn't make sense. You know, also, well, the idea that this company doesn't know that the facility that they're heavily funding isn't breaking uh, uh, eth- uh, scientific ethics requirements, or the fact that this is probably the first time that anybody's gone to this this research facility. 
Are we talking about Sam Jackson? Yeah, it's just like, if you're that invested in this, you think you would have gone at least once. You would have seen some videos. You would have done something more than, uh, well, you know, I've seen this newspaper from US Today, and it said one of the sharks got out. Oh, you're in trouble. We're not going to He was too busy wreck money. diving and, and heli skiing and whatever else he was doing. Well, if they <laughs> updated this movie, he'd be like in a rocket or something. <laughs> He's a busy guy. I, I, I want to go back to LL Cool J. Um, I feel like they did a lot to try and endear him to the audience. Like, you know, the stuff with the bird. Mm-hmm. You ate my bird. Um, I love the bird. But, you know, on YouTube, there's a super cut of just clips of the bird from the movie. <laughs> 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 love the bird. Um, but, Don, I wanted to ask you, because, I mean, this is a, a oh, 90s sure. horror movie. And I know the director at the time I was reading that when... They made this movie. He wanted to make a, a classic horror movie because he was kind of tired of all of the like self-referential things that were happening with horror at the time, with like Scream uh, and, and 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 all of that self-awareness that it's a scary movie. But um, he wanted to do just a classic horror film. And then you have two characters who are African American, and traditionally in horror films, you know that doesn't always end well. And and they really build up um, LL Cool J's character. And then he then he survives at the end. Spoiler alerts: he doesn't die. Um, I just wanted to know what what your take on that was because you know watching it again, I I was curious what you had to say about that. Do you mean as far as like him specifically not going that route of like oh no black people are going to survive? Well, just that and, or... and, and and how much they, they how much they invest into his character, like endearing him to us because you you're they watching didn't make him one dimensional and. Well, yeah, I mean, the first time you see it, you don't know that he's not going to die. So you're just kind of waiting for him to die, and then he doesn't. Right. When Sam Jackson dies, you're like, yeah, that makes sense. But I don't no, know. I, just... it, well, I don't know if, because did you see? Did you say you saw this in the movie theater, correct? Yeah, but I was 10 years old. so Okay. No, it, it's because I was working in the movie theater, and we screened it. And everybody, when we watched the movie, was like, what the fuck? You know, the whole scene where Samuel Jackson gets eaten. So God, that's I, a made, great scene. I, I made Such it a, a great point. Scene. Because when you work in a movie theater, you time out your movies to like, oh, this is going to happen at, at in like two minutes. I'm going to go in there and see the audience's reaction. Like I could imagine when, you know, Avengers Endgame came out and or or even the, the previous one, uh, Infinity War, where you could imagine people working in the movie theater, the ushers walking in like, oh, I want to see everybody's reaction and get those goosebumps. I would go in specific, specifically for that scene so I could just hear everybody like. With the same response, holy shit, they killed Samuel <laughs> Jackson in this movie. What the fuck? And, and you have this moment where everybody's just sitting there like, oh shit, everybody's going to die in this movie. You don't kill the star? <laughs> what is that? How does that happen? Well, as, uh, as a but, kid, I've, I'd only ever known him to die because he died in Jurassic Park. So I was like, yeah, this, oh, true. he's just somebody who dies on film. <laughs> well, you know what's funny is they prob- the, the director may have done that because of Jurassic Park, because of all those links that you have with, the, or at least the the overlap of, of story and, and and themes, but no, with with those two characters, they were not one dimensional, right? You got enough of a backstory on Samuel Jackson's character um, to know his motivation as far as like wanting to be there. Yes, it was about money, but then also the idea of okay, this this isn't some pampered rich guy who shows up. This is a guy who is a thrill seeker. This is a guy who uh, is actually putting his own life in danger. And then he kind of tells you like, oh, well, you know, uh, we got struck by the avalanche. And seven of us made it out. But that's the movie I want to see. I want to see. Oh, as soon as you said that, I'm like, holy shit. I want to. I need to. I need Sam. You need to produce this movie because it. I know we have a live and there were a couple other movies that were done like it. But I want to see that movie where you're all just sitting there deciding who's going to get eaten. Vertical uh, Limit? Did you ever see Vertical Limit? Oh, my God. So long ago. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that movie, but instead of Chris O'Donnell, it's Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> uh, enough cannibalism. Uh, so. well, <laughs> there's never enough cannibalism. But even with L.L.'s character, right? It's You see him as like a normal guy doing his job. Um, the, and he's and he's even a little bit perturbed at Samuel Jackson's character. He's like, yeah, uh, heard you were like involved in some mountain climbing thing. That's for white people, dude. Like, why would you go to do some shit like that just to fuck with him? But it's still kind of like it's a 
it's a nod to the audience kind of understanding that as well, because as he's talking about, oh, I've gone, I went, you know, mountain, uh, mountain climbing. I did this and did this. And there was an avalanche. And I could, I remember everybody I went to, I worked with who was black. I'm like, what the fuck is he doing climbing a mountain? Doesn't know he's black. <laughs> <laughs> he knows he's black, right? Well, fair enough. And I think, I think even LL's line is something to the effect of like, you know, I don't go up on mountains. We don't do shit like that. Um, so I, I wonder how much freedom or or input, uh, especially LL would have had with his character to make him not, you know, comic relief or not make him a stooge or a stereotype or anything like that. Because he's still, I mean, even at the time, he was he had enough of a track record to where I'm sure he would have had some say in how his character would have would have played out on film, as opposed to, you know, he happens to be a rapper who just started in, in film. And now it's like, um, I'm going to take whatever role I'm going to pr- play the role, however you want me to play it. So, you know, give me the lines. So that's another thing. Like, uh, I feel like every five years, there's a new rapper who they decide to make a movie star. And I, I don't know when that started. And I was wondering if you could shed some, because for me, it's like my generation would be ludicrous. Right. With, with, like Fast oh, and the Furious and, and doing music for the movie the way LL Cool J was in this and did music for the movie, which was amazing. And you should go on YouTube and, and look up Deepest Bluest by LL Cool J. Don't do um, that. Because the music do video is No, do it. Incredible. Do it. They, made, they made me do it and don't do it. It's the best do music it. video I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I've seen, no, I, I've seen over 50. That's something that that I guess as far as making use of the black celebrity – um, whether they're performers, whether they're athletes and putting them in the films, that's something that's, that's gone on for a while. But yeah, I remember in the nineties, the early nineties, it became a, it became a thing to bring rappers in or hip hop artists into films. And I think late nineties, maybe early 2000, which it would have coincided with this film, Samuel Jackson was speaking out against it, but people took it the wrong way. He was basically saying we shouldn't give them the first opportunity mm. to take, you know, get in these films. He said, because if you start having every movie has a rapper in it or you have a lot of people who aren't trained, you're going to have a lot of black actors and black actresses that could be in those roles and do them a lot better. So, he, you know, somebody took it as like, oh, he doesn't want rappers and whatever to be in movies. And he's like, <laughs> no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm, I've obviously been in movies with rappers. And I'm just saying. They shouldn't be the first option. That should it, that, be the first option. That's how I feel about Maroon Five songs. Why is there a rapper in every song? I don't, I don't know what's. Oh, going I on. thought you felt Maroon Five <laughs> songs should not be the first option, and I agree. Oh, that too. Um, <laughs> well, what about like Michael Jackson and like The Wiz? Was that a big thing, or was that just like? Well, that was big because of everybody was that was in it because you had. Uh, Michael Jackson, you had oh my god! But I think there's a, there's Debbie a, Allen was right? Diana Ross was in it, right? But then you have you have movies like that that are like musicals and like I don't know. You go back to like the Beatles and they were they had their own movies, but those are, those are movies written for them, like with them and same mind. thing with like Elvis and all of his movies, right? But it's not like a minor character in I don't know. I mean, uh, maybe I'm so overthinking you're talking it. more like no, no, Will no, Smith. you're not overthinking it. You're not overthinking it. This yeah, is like one, this is a, good is a way to get an audience in there because. If you have 13 Ghosts, because 13 Ghosts came out in, what, 99, 2000? Because you had, sure. like, you had a lot of movies, a lot of good horror movies that came out during that period that did take advantage of this. So you had Buster Rhymes, who was in the Halloween, was it H2O? Uh, Rod That's, Diggle that was in... feels like such a gimmick, though, because, like, you look at, like, I don't know, I, I love the Rob Zombie movies, but they always felt like gimmicks to me. And then, like, like Chester from Linkin Park was in a Saw movie, and that felt like a gimmick, too. So, like, where's the line See, between gimmick okay, and, like, useful so that use that one of didn't to me because, like, it wasn't Chester being Chester. Like, he mm-hmm. was legitimately in a role. Obviously, Saw is one of my favorite things ever. But, uh, like, that one never felt weird to me. Uh, but I also feel like, like, he didn't get, like, a ton of screen time. Like, he was a role that was described to us, and then he died. And we watched well, yeah, him. I, I feel like more it, of a cameo, you know? Yeah. But that, and that's why it was distracting to me because he didn't have depth as his own character. It was just kind of like, oh, there's Chester and I'm still looking at Chester and I can't separate the two. I didn't have enough time to separate the two, you know? I don't know. I don't, I don't know if enough people like, like obviously people that listen to Linkin Park knew, but like, I don't know if a lot of other people even knew who that was. 
Okay, but then then to the same thing that that Sam Jackson was saying, is there an actual actor who could have had that role that would have been better at it? But if he wasn't doing anything, it, it's it really just becomes a cameo at that point because it's we you use it as a talking point, right? So it's as opposed to this movie, you know LL's in it. So people who like LL Cool J are going to go see the movie, right? Because Saffron Burroughs, no no offense to her, Saffron Burroughs does not have the same clout within uh, within a lot of communities that LL would have. Like LL is everywhere. Uh, I mean, shit, he's he's on what NCIS or one of the one of those TV shows, cop TV shows now. <laughs> Like he's is he still main, on that show? Oh my he's God. he's like ridiculously mainstream or CS. He's on one of those things. He's always but hosting he's, like award shows. Yeah, yeah like he's like he's an ridiculously every mainstream to where, and I don't want to say he's non-threatening, but that was kind of the approach of like he wasn't quote unquote gangster rap. Well, he you know? yeah, he's like on the same level now as like Mario Lopez and Ryan Seacrest. I was uh, literally no. going to say he's kind of a black Mario Lopez. Don't yeah. do that. I was going to say that's, that's where he is. Ryan Seacrest. <laughs> that's where he is. But and that's where he is now. Imagine Indiana was a lot today, different. Today, today. But that's today, my question. Yeah. Where was he at the point that this came out? Because that's not the same. He was at the same point, as fucked up as it sounds, he was at the same point that Jennifer Lopez was in the late 90s. Okay. Yeah. So like, but okay. So to me, so, so there's a marketing reason now is because of deep blue sea is what you're saying. I don't think that's what he's no. saying at all. <laughs> well, no, but like, yeah. that's a launching point. Like this is what <laughs> got him into film and now he's doing everything. Like he had to start somewhere and he started with deep blue sea. Is this really his first film? I don't know. I don't know that no, that's true. This is not his first acting gig. I can't believe you would do that. What were you, um, you going to say about Jay Lewis? He was in any, no, wait, no. Any given Sunday came out after. That was like, oh, uh, shit. He but, did a, so, oh, he did a few. Yeah, he was in, he was in H2O. He was in Halloween H2O as well. Um, he was in BAPS. God, what was that other movie? Yeah, he was in a lot of okay, stuff. Okay, well. Okay, okay, but so, so I guess from my point of view, I think this was brilliant marketing when they were doing this on a more consistent level, whether it was Will Smith or LL or even like using MC Hammer for the, uh, Adam's family. Fam- Adam's family, yeah. Like, I, I think that's so smart because you're getting these songs that are getting radio play. Mm-hmm. And then at the time, music videos were fucking huge. Like, you know, kids today have no idea what MTV was or VH1. But, like, this shit played there nonstop. So it was like every hour you got a four-minute trailer for your film that people wanted to see instead of going to grab food in between their show. Right. You know, and I get why we don't do it as much today, but going to what Samuel L. Jackson said, I kind of feel like this probably saved the studio's money as well because they were able to cut one contract and LL does both and they don't have to pay two people to do it. And, oh, and I, get where, I get where Sam's coming from on this 100%. Who, I wonder I'm, I'm if, saying that's fucking smart. Wow. If he was employed by like if the if the production company is like Warner Brothers and he's on Warner Brothers record label, like I'm sure some of this is probably already in his contract to do, right? Like you have to appear in X amount of movies and you have to make X amount of records. Like that would or make sense. Right? It could even be this is a doorway in. Like, hey, right. you're already doing records with us. How'd you like to make a movie? Nobody's right. turning that shit down. I could have been on a conversation anymore. going like this is like what kind of movie is it? we got killer sharks it's a horror movie and samuel jackson's gonna be in it um so i'm the one who's gonna die no not necessarily <laughs> oh yeah when they told him he was living he probably just like did it for free no i don't know that i'm making that up but no they probably just turned him into a shark in a music video or something <laughs> that's right you get to morph into a shark yeah but now nowadays they just have like you just get like your own special meal at McDonald's. It seems like that's the only marketing going on. Like, do you guys remember they were doing that for a while at McDonald's? Like, a, a, talking a about rap- like the, the BTS and yeah, yeah. And like Saweetie had her own like combo meal, and it was just like it's a strange marketing angle. For it me. is I, very I strange. I don't know if that's I don't maybe it's associated with their uh, I guess uh, uh, their concerts tours whatever. Uh, maybe McDonald's or Coke's a sponsor. But no, I, yeah, you're right. When it comes to marketing that way with any artist, it's it's almost as if you've got to do it through social media 
or through various like product alignments now, as opposed to here's a music video tied to this movie, unless we're talking about, I mean, shit, the first thing that comes to my mind is, is in Canto, right? So that the intro of the movie is a music video. Yeah. And because the movie mm-hmm. is a musical, it, it's real easy to do that. Yeah. Um, and Disney on their, I guess their Disney music channel or whatever, that's just what they have. They don't, they didn't make anything extra. It was simply those scenes where the movie had this, the, the music, they put those, cut them as their own music videos and left them up there. It makes sense. It's easy. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Well, I guess nowadays, like the the biggest star that's also a mu- or was a musician first is Lady Gaga, God, but she's out there making she like, but she's out there making like you know, I don't know, like real movies, not like you know kitschy horror action flicks. So I, I feel no, like it's not, she's, not the she's same. making <laughs> movies where she's apparently, I'm gonna get in trouble with the what do they call the monsters? Um, <laughs> they don't listen yeah. to our show. She's. she's not a lot of monster I, I, traffic on this. I gotta say something <laughs> to the monsters that are out there right now. Not not the not the sharks, the 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 mutant sharks. <laughs> but oh, who's worse? <laughs> the monsters. Oh man, don't start that. Um, so I I get Lady Gaga. At least I, I mean I liked her like 10, 12 years ago or whenever. Um but when you start realizing this is somebody that's starting to believe their own bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I went and I trained with, I, I think she was talking, because Salma Hayek and she were doing an interview. And Salma Hayek has been acting for well over 30 years. And Lady Gaga went in this whole thing of like, oh, and then I did this type of methodology in order to get this character. And Salma Hayek's like, bitch, I just showed up. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Um, yeah, but I don't know. I just don't. I don't like. Uh, I don't like the persona. Um, yeah. No, well, I. I, which I think once that is. A, and... <laughs> I, I think that's another Frankenstein thing there as well. Like like these sharks. It's it's. <laughs> you should it's start some... a podcast about Frankenstein everywhere. <laughs> no, I mean that, that's look. That's what this shit is, right? I mean. Uh, it, and the same thing with Jurassic Park. It's you're creating something because you can't and not thinking about the consequences because you're thinking like, oh, this will be great because I can bring dinosaurs back or I can bring a, a dead person back to life or I can create life somehow. Right. I can extend someone's life with this pill that I can make based off the proteins from the, the brains in these sharks that we've genetically modified. Uh, and and now I can bring back, you know, all these people I know who, who suffer from Alzheimer's and, and and fix them, right? But it was As it was it was a selfish reason for her because it wasn't that she wanted her dad to be okay. It was that she just didn't want to have to tell him that her mom was dead every every day. <laughs> like it was Which completely that, from her own. Yeah, that seems so much easier. Yeah. I I've I've dealt with enough people who have cognitive issues, who've had uh memory issues, have had an Alzheimer's, and you just I can't imagine having to having having such you having all those degrees, but you can't figure out a different way to tell your dad like, oh, she just went to the store. Like, oh, I, he was so sad every time I told him that my mom died, because every time I told him his heart broke all over again. I'm like, then don't fucking tell him. <laughs> right? I know this sounds crass, but he's gonna forget again. So don't fucking tell him. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. It's 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 like fifty first dates. Like, why do you keep why do you keep harassing this girl who has it's a, a great problem? movie? No, it's not. That love is love that a, movie. That's an abusive fucking movie. <laughs> love that movie. It's great. So here, here's an issue with like I the really short like, stuff. Uh, that one gaslighting. Fifty first gaslights. Um, it was so it, widely across the world. It's illegal to eat shark fin soup, right? It's just not not something you do anymore. Uh, and hat soup, yes. That too. Could you imagine the uproar though? If like. We can cure Alzheimer's. We just have to harvest these shark brains. People would fucking lose their minds about it. <laughs> well, the like thing is, human beings are more dangerous to sharks than sharks are to human beings. No, I know that, but just from like a, a, a you know, I don't. Oh wanna... no, no, I'm I'm just hitting on that that paranoia that we all have about. Oh my god, if you go in the ocean, they're gonna eat you. If you go out here, like I've, god damn it, I'm gonna go ahead and say this. James, shut the fuck up. Just let me say it. Here we go. 
I have swam with sharks before or in the vicinity of sharks. Go ahead, James. Say it. Say what? Okay. You know, you missed your opportunity. Continue your story. So anyway, <laughs> but it was, it was at a Marine research facility when we were doing field trips for these kids. And, um, you know, we wait, went wait, out there. Wait, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, like it was shark field trips. No, no, it was it was a marine. It was a marine <laughs> research facility. It was it was on Catalina Island. I thought you were. Oh, beautiful. So, oh no, beautiful this is Catalina years Island. Ago. I thought you were in the There's army. A... Were, were you in the army or the marines? I was in the army. Hmm. No, we didn't do anything like that. But did anyway. you see that Cuba Gooding Jr. movie, Men of Honor? God, and you're like, I'm going to be a fucking navy diver. <laughs> no, no. I knew this would not... degenerate at some point. <laughs> no, here's the thing. Like, okay, go on. I. From going there, like even then, I was like, you know, the the instructors were like, oh yeah, there's sharks in these waters, but there's this type of shark and this type of shark, and they actually they don't come near humans and blah blah. blah. And I'm thinking in my head, like, what the fuck? I'm gonna be the one who gets bitten by one of these things, right? But the truth is, as they explain, and as I've seen in in other uh, sources, that the threat to humans is minimal. When, especially when compared to to the threat that human beings have towards sharks. And you brought up the shark fin soup thing, and they were talking about the way that it was taught that, oh, well, we're only, you know, we're going to catch these sharks, cut the fin off, and then leave them. And then what it actually does is the sharks can't swim anymore because that, that was it, the dorsal fin has been cut, so they can't function normally, and they end up dying. Um, so I don't think it would be even, I don't think it would be, I don't want to say immoral. I think the reaction to people experimenting on sharks would not have the reaction that we think it would because Hmm. sharks are cute. And I mean, as far as the, the way that we've kind of had propaganda against sharks that talks about, oh, they're vicious killing machines. You know, it's, it's a, um, it's it's got a prehistoric mindset where it only thinks about you know its next meal you know this whole thing about like so do there's, I. there's nothing <laughs> about this thing that we should endear ourselves when when really if you look at it dolphins are the assholes in the water um <laughs> they are like i've watched some programs dolphins are assholes um this is a wait so let's, <laughs> let's get into let's get into the science of this so do they ever do they ever explain why sharks like why they pick sharks? It was because they they their brains didn't deteriorate, right? So, do they need to make a whole shark? Like, can't we just grow a shark's brain in a test tube? Like, we grow ears on the back of mice. Can't we figure out a way to not have to have aquatic? Well, remember, this is they're they're still using zip drives. This is the late nineties. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. Their their computers were fucking fast, and like everything was mapped out and animated. <laughs> It was very impressive. They spared no expense. Exactly. They spared no <laughs> expense. Oh, the thing that annoyed me the most about their little command center was that like that that hole where the shark surfaces in the, the lab. It's the perfect size for that shark. How did they know that that was going to be the size of the sharks? I'm just saying. They're like, it can, it can be growing forever. But this is It just happens to be perfect for that size hole right now. Yeah, it's not like they can expand it if they need to. No, and then Tom, Tom Jane kept saying, like, it's not it's not time. They're not ready. They're still growing. So I don't know. Why didn't they try to, like, instead of making sharks smarter, why didn't they take some of their dumb friends and make them smarter? Well, one of and the then, things I like about the movie on their brains. <laughs> is that there's no dumb people. Like, I mean, there's dumb people, but there's like it's not like Jurassic Park. There's no, like, dumb kids in, in ruining the movie, right? It's well, just... yeah, but you had to be smart enough to get a job here. Like, like at Jurassic Park, you can just, like, pay admission and get in. And most people were smart enough to get on the boat that left the day before, just or the helicopter, or whatever they they took to. I know it was a cruise ship or whatever, but just like Jurassic Park, like all the smart people leave before the storm. It's always a fucking storm too. Like why are why are we doing these experiments during a storm? It never that ends. That was well. my number one question when I was. So you can't do this some other time. And wouldn't it's the got swell to be today? Wouldn't the swell from the storm like flood that like chamber anyways? Like the, the, there's nothing capping that water in their holding. T- I don't know. I don't fucking know. <laughs> well, no, because they had it pressurized in the in the whole. Oh, tank. of course. Yeah. It's always it's always pressurized, and there's always so when, doors and shit. So when Michael Rappaport <laughs> opened the 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 lock or or whatever it's called, I forgot what those doors are called. 
Um, but when he opened the door, that's when he talked about, oh, you know, when I open this, it's going to if the the door up top is compromised, um, it's going to lead to that water coming in violently. Uh, and I think he said 32,000 uh, tons of water. Um, and then you'll lose the structural integrity of the entire station. Right. So the whole the whole story is them trying to get from the bottom to the top. Right. So they avoid the flooding. Another trope of, of horror action films, you need to start at the bottom and get to the top of the building. Which is the direct opposite of next week's episode, where we're looking at as above, so below. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but even then, they've got to start from the bottom to get to the top. They don't know that. Now continue. Well, we know that. <laughs> <laughs> they eventually figure that out. Don't ruin this show. Jeez. As I just open my drink without muting my mic. <laughs> Excellent. What time are we at? Uh, leave it. It doesn't matter. Um, Perfect. So, so there you go, listeners. I drink soda. All right, go Wait, ahead. what soda are you drinking? Because we need to have sponsors. Today's since. episode is brought to you by Coke Zero. Unless they're still supporting Russia, and then I definitely bought this months ago. My head is like a Coke Zero. <laughs> I only drink Jolt Cola, the official cola of Jurassic Park. <laughs> so. All right. All right. So, Thomas, you were bringing up the whole idea of, of science, right? And at least the science behind this. And the great thing about these movies is, is whenever we're involving anything scientific, we can do the whole suspension of belief and like, yeah, of course, this was really easy for you guys to do. You, you know, th- we're not talking about decades of research that gets to this. We're talking about this one brilliant scientist who pisses in the wind, who's able to figure this out. But then for some reason, um, you know, doesn't move far away from a shark tank while he's trying to smoke a cigarette, which <laughs> I think I think that part is a great anti-smoking ad. Oh, boy. <laughs> wow. Either that or the shark really wanted to smoke. Um, that, that scene where he's pissing into the wind, I hope Stellan Skarsgård chose to do I hope that was his choice as an actor. Like, film me up there. I'm going to pee into the wind. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you, you brought up the thing about the size of the lab and whatever, right? Um, a lot of these facilities, a, a lot of these facilities, like, you know, I brought up before on, on other episodes about how you know, uh, police department offices or whatever, they're always like so pristine. Everything is so orderly. Everything is great. Um, and you look at this and you're like, this, this looks like some futuristic place that, that this would be taking place in. Like it would look like it was in space, right? Oh, you know, like on Star Trek or something like that. And I think by doing that, they, they kind of sell us as the audience on, yeah, everything is is going the right way as far as with their with their experiments. It's going to be successful. Yeah, some shit is going to go go awry because that's what we're here for. But it at least sells you on the idea that they had been working so hard on this, as opposed to Samuel Jackson. You know, it's like okay, I want to see what I've been spending my money on, and he shows up, and you know, it's like two two tin cans and a and a string. You know, well, was it even his money? Who was the so at the beginning when Saffron Burroughs goes to like their headquarters and she's pleading with them to stay open until Monday or whatever it was? Who's who's the guy that's there with them? Because there's a, there's a guy in a chair and then Sam Jackson is like with like his associate. So I thought it was his money. Well, he says it was his money. You know, he says, oh, I've spent because he says my he doesn't say our. He said, I've I've spent, you know, two hundred million dollars or I've invested over two hundred million dollars in this. Huh? Yeah, I guess so. And I forget the actor's name because he he basically plays the same guy in everything. Uh, he's either you know a, a rich white guy or like a, a rich you know a white professional in some way. Yeah, I know who you're uh, talking about. But I don't even think he had a line in this movie, did he? He just kind of sits there. <laughs> what a good <laughs> deal that is. Uh, that's what James wants to do during the podcast. <laughs> that that's my dream. That's the dream. <laughs> Speaking of which, check out our antebellum episode. All right, go ahead. <laughs> um no I, I just yeah i mean we could talk about aquatica too just from a movie point of view how ridiculous that that <laughs> that whole structure is my, my favorite scene in the whole movie aside from sam jackson's death and uh um 
it's it's when <laughs> the helicopter crashes and, and Stellan Skarsgård's body is in the water and he's still on the gurney and you just see him drifting closer and closer to Aquatica and then boom, right against the glass. When that glass breaks and that water floods that chamber, those people should be just shredded from the glass. That was like four inch thick bulletproof glass. <laughs> mm-hmm. It should have sandblasted them into nothing and they're all just fine. <laughs> I always thought that was ridiculous. Well, the other thing that that bothered me about, and this is kind of a horror thing, they're, you know, three levels underwater. I forgot how many meters or how many feet that they said they actually were underwater. But they're so far underwater, they see the glass crack, and they're contemplating what they should do. When their first step should have been, hey, let's get the fuck out of here. That's what Sam Jackson says, and then he just kind (laughs) of lingers. <laughs> because everybody else is just sitting there, like, I wonder what's going to happen to the glass. Well, the one is doctor was very upset because that was her like boyfriend or her lover, you know. But she even didn't... then, like, say your goodbyes on the on the top side. Well, I don't think they knew he was going to get <laughs> <laughs> dumped back into the ocean. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm talking about you know, just go up there and then like, oh, you know, look down in the water and wish him well. Um, oh, just a metaphorical goodbye. Yeah. I mean, oh. there's nothing you can do at that point. It's, it's he's gone <laughs> one way or another. He, he's he's done because the ocean's kind of like space where it's like if somebody floats away, they're just fucked. You know, like you're not going to go after them. No. Sorry. I like that. <laughs> Why are you sorry? No, I'm just letting you know, like if you start floating away from me in the ocean, I'm not following. I don't go in the ocean. There's mermaids I, in there. <laughs> you see, that's the one benefit that, that James and I have over you, Don, is that we don't go in the water. We don't go in the ocean. Oh, I don't go like other than that that marine thing. Uh the the marine oh, that's why you asked me about the marine thing. The the marine biology thing. Um it was I, I don't go further out from the from the beach. If if I go to the beach, I don't go further out from the beach until like it gets up to my waist as far as the, the water or the or the waves. Like once mm-hmm. they get up to my waist, I'm like, I'm fucking not going any further. If I can't see the water under me, not going any further because I can look at all the cute little fish and the shells that are going by. I'm good. But but that goes into a, a deeper fear because I James is talking about this, but your fear, you know, is, is with water is is what exactly? My fear or your concern? No, James, you you've talked about. It. I want to hear Thomas first, but of course, oh okay, else. okay. Everybody else, you know, they can hear yours after Thomas. My fear of going in the ocean? Or your or your dislike of it? Well, I mean, I dislike the beach. Um, at some point in history, somebody decided that that's just dirt that everybody's cool with sitting on. It's just, that's <laughs> not for me. Um, Thank you. <laughs> but also, like, I so I can't swim. Like, I know the fundamentals of swimming, but right. I, I just can't do it. So I avoid the water at all times just because it could end poorly for me. Um, and, and up until like, I don't know, last year I I went to Maui against my better judgment and, um, which is all just fucking sand and water. And I was convinced to go into the ocean for like the first time in 20 years. So like I weighed in, like you said, like, you know, knee deep, just like, so I could get people off my back and be like, look, I did it. I went in the water and then I look up and a fucking like 10 foot wave just knocks me out. And I am just floating in the water. Like I'm in outer space. And I was just like, this is the worst feeling in the world. (laughs) Nope, I'm not doing that. <laughs> so for me, I just don't like I don't like being in the water. It, it could be a pool. It could be the ocean. It really doesn't matter to me. I literally offered to let him stay at my house. And I was like, I have a giant pool. And he's like, what the fuck would I use that for? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My my thing is just not knowing what's in there. You know, mm-hmm. like it's it's like like even when you think you can see like you can't. And and I grew up in Nebraska where all the water is like this muddy, gross, disgusting sludge. Ooh. And and people like hang out in it and they like swim in these I don't I don't get it. I don't get rivers, I don't get any of that. And then like fucking like catfish will swim up and touch your leg and nope. Nope, I'm <laughs> quite good. Thanks. So I'm I'm a little more than Thomas because I'll then go in chlorinated water that I can see the bottom of, but that's mm-hmm. that's where it ends. I have no desire to do anything else. Thanks. Wait, I, don't like the, I don't I don't like I don't like the feeling of being wet. Like even when I get wet in the rain, I'm just I like the rain, 
but the getting wet part, I'm just like, that's so uncomfortable. I'm that way with the, the muddy feeling of sand or mud or dirt. Like, I don't, I don't like that, that feeling of it sticking to you. That grittiness so of, between your toes. Yeah. Yeah. None of this appeals to me at all. So Don, you probably, I'm <laughs> Don, assuming Don, w- welcome to a new podcast. more water Fuck than we do. <laughs> well, here, I don't know what, when it started for me, um, because I'm not a beach. I don't like the crowds. I don't like crowds anywhere. Uh, but I definitely don't like crowds at at, a, at beaches or beach type areas. And I'm including like the fake beaches at, you know, like uh, like Lake Lanier, Georgia, which uh, if people knew anything about that, they probably wouldn't fucking go there <laughs> because there's a very dark history that goes along with Lake Lanier. Um, so I don't know. I, it, it just became one of those things where I just if if I was out there on the beach, whether we're talking about. Um, in the beaches around LA, any of the ones that were like on the Georgia coast, um, Florida, uh, Baja, anything like that, like, or San Diego as well. Uh, and, and even where my wife is from, like, I'm okay because most of the times I would go to those places, it was when it wasn't busy. There weren't that many people. And it was about hearing the, the, you know, just hearing the waves crash. So for me, it was just like walking on the beach and then going about my day uh it was never about like oh i'm gonna sit out here and drink all day and bullshit and um you know build sand castles anything like that uh mind you it's different when you have a kid because then you you will like do all that stuff and let them play in the sand and stuff but for me it, it was more about like being close to the water hearing the water that type of stuff but it was never a thing of like i'm gonna go out there and boogie board or or um, whatever other aquatic activities are out there because I have no interest in doing any of that, especially since uh, where my wife is from, there is actually a place called uh, Tiburon Island, which uh, is, sh- you know, it's Spanish for sharks because they make, have they have sharks there. I will make one exception. Tiburon. I, uh, I want to go to Zewatneo. Oh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> trying, to, trying to get a place there, man. I mean. Get a, yacht, get, get a boat, fix it up. I just, I, I picture myself like running across the beach as Don's like working on his boat. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm uh, still, in, I'm still in the prison dream. telling stories about you too. <laughs> oh no, you probably got shot after you got your GED. So, oh yeah, that makes more sense. <laughs> yeah. Greatest uh, movie ever. Anyway. Wonderful film. One thing I wanted to, to bring up with you guys, I, I'm, I know I'm, I'm decades younger than both of you, but Decades, um, Jesus, man! It's like <laughs> one. I remember. What, so, how young were you when you had Thomas? <laughs> wow, wow! <laughs> years and years of birthday cards I haven't gotten. Um, <laughs> anyway, my, my question, you and you won't be getting them now since Maury's going to be uh, retiring. So, <laughs> oh my God, he, he got canceled. That's different. Netflix will pick him up. Somebody will keep him in business. Uh, anyway, so. What I what I wanted to ask you guys is, do you have a memory of watching a movie with your parents and something happens on screen that just makes you really like uncomfortable? And what I mean by that, and I'll explain in Deep Blue Sea, that scene with Saffron Burroughs when she like takes off her wetsuit and she's just like in her underwear. Um, mm-hmm. I felt really uncomfortable watching that with my dad because that was like only the second time I can remember at that age seeing a woman on screen and being like, wow, this is a very attractive person, you know? So I felt weird thinking that while watching it with my dad. Um, And it just made me uncomfortable because it's always weird to see nudity or any kind of, you know, sex with your parents around. Oh God, I got one. 10 years old and being like this, this woman is very attractive. This is really uncomfortable for me. Um, and the other time was Reality Bites. I had the biggest crush on Winona Ryder when I was like seven. <laughs> um, but I don't know. Do you guys have a memory of just being uncomfortable? Oh, watching? yeah. <laughs> Ton, would you like to go first or second? Uh, I'll go after you. Uh, Pacific Heights, 1990. Uh, my family never went to movie theaters. So literally, we saw two movies in theaters and Pacific Heights was one of them. <laughs> and... Uh, and and like I think it's the opening scene, but I don't remember for sure. Is just a sex scene, and so this woman's boobs were 
gigantic on the screen. And on top of that, we were the only three people in the theater. (laughs) So I was literally (laughs) sitting next to my mother who just kept looking at me during this scene. Oh, that's so weird. (laughs) And that's why I have all the issues I have. Thank you for coming to my therapy session. Wow. Okay. (laughs) Really fast. The other movie they took me to because it meant so much to them was Dances with Wolves. One of the most historically accurate. Wait, no. (laughs) That one didn't go well either. Oh, no, there's three because it also made me go to Last of the Mohicans. So those are the three movies that I saw with them. And I'm noticing a trend now that I'm I'm sensing about it. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, All right, Don, you're up. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So. Oh, let me stretch on this one. All right. So for me, it was when I was an adult. It wasn't when I was a kid. It was when <laughs> I was a freaking adult. And I was on some break or whatever. And my mom wanted to go see He Got Game with uh, Denzel Washington. And if you've seen the movie, you know what scene it is. Um, but there, there's just a scene where Ray Allen is being recruited. And de- different scenes, but he's being recruited and Rick Fox is playing the other guy at the college who's trying to get him to, to come to that college, right? So he's like, oh, you know, um, we got a cool, you know, coach is really cool. We got a stadium that's brand new. We got great boosters, blah, blah, blah. So he's like, oh, and this is the dorm that we all stay in. Oh, let me introduce you to like, I forgot what he said, the student welcoming committee or the student uh, student association or whatever. And so he opens the door and it's two like blonde women with big boobs, like laying in bed. And he's like, have fun. And I'm sitting there and my mom is right next to me. And you just hear like them just going at it and watch them going at it. <laughs> Fuck, I can't believe I came to this movie. <laughs> and I look, I, and not like your mom looked at you. I looked over at my mom, and she was like, "This is a pretty good movie." I like this. <laughs> I'm like, "You gotta be, you gotta be shitting me! What is going on here?" Um, other than that, it would have been movies. I think for me, it was a, it was a situation where it was a movie that I knew I shouldn't have been watching, like Porky's, that type of movie, and it was an issue of I don't want to get caught watching it. Oh, I felt that way before. Yep, I know, I know that feeling. Me too, and my giant porn collection. The first time I well, saw a naked woman on screen was in Hollow Man, the kid. Or no, sorry, uh, yeah, was it Hollow Man, the Kevin Bacon movie? Is that what that yeah, was yeah, called? Yeah, yeah, yeah. terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you wish you could be invisible at that moment. <laughs> it's it's funny, J- James. The idea of your mom just like looking over at you. Um, I Repeatedly. remember. Repeatedly, it wasn't like she stared at me. It was like, look, look at the screen. Look, look at the screen. Like. What Do you remember um, uh, Janet Jackson's wardrobe malfunction at the Super Bowl? <laughs> I don't remember. What was that, like 2000, 2002, maybe? Um, um, it was early. It was, sure. it was early 2000s. I remember I was still young. I was still like either preteen or just barely a teenager. And I remember the next day, my mom came up to me. This is a woman who never had the sex talk with me, never talked about relationships with me, came up to me and she was like, did you... Did you see Miss Jackson's breast yesterday? <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> it's like, I don't. I, Doesn't I, she know I, it's only Miss Jackson if you're nasty? <laughs> and, and and I didn't. I hadn't seen it because I was I was playing up football outside during halftime with my friends. So I, I missed the whole the whole naked boob thing. But I just thought like that's the moment she decides to like bring it up to me. Like, mm-hmm. uh, it was so uncomfortable. Just so uncomfortable. <laughs> that's fantastic. Anyway, what movie are we talking about? <laughs> I don't know. I think we're just here for a therapy session about how our moms made us weirder. <laughs> that could be a podcast Is in itself. Possible? I know a lot of guests we could get for that. <laughs> well, write that down. <laughs> no, you brought up the, the I, I think you brought up the kills earlier, Thomas, as far as oh. I forgot that LL Cool J killed two out of three of the sharks until I until I watched it uh, again. He killed today. his bird. And well, he impaled one, Tom J. had to do it. He almost killed Tom Jane. Well, <laughs> it was his fault. <laughs> <laughs> that, scene where he's, that scene where he's in the oven being cooked alive is amazing. That scene's fantastic. Like, that's like the only part of the movie that's... James, you were telling me that there were parts of the movie that you found just like straight up boring, right? Because I think they're trying to build suspense, the idea of they, they're at the bottom, they got to get to the top, are they going to make it? That's like the suspense of the movie. Yeah. But like that that scene where and it's not effective. It is boring. It them scaling the building is 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 
not fun, but that scene where he's like in the oven being cooked alive, that's like legitimately suspenseful and it's entertaining. Oh, no, that's a great scene. Yeah. No, I think it's uh I think it's a matter of you know how today with streaming we're getting different uh different run times where we actually meet what the story needs instead of we have to make this exact time because it's a movie. I, I, I feel like this movie suffers from that. I think there's just pieces that like you could have cut one or two minutes in different places and it would just be a tighter, better paced movie. So I, I, I shouldn't say I was bored. It was just like there were pieces that I was like, that's great, but there's actually interesting stuff going on. Let's go back to that. Yeah. It's like the camera was in the wrong place. Well, I got a couple of trivia pieces because I was talking to my wife about this when we were watching the film. Um, so I hope that you're scene... going to talk about Thomas Jane. Yes. Oh God! So you know the the part when they get up, they they're taking the 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 doctor up to the which by the way that rescue helicopter gets there really fucking fast. Well, there was <laughs> there was gonna be a storm. They knew some shit was going down. So, but they get him up there right, and so when those the the waves and everything start crashing, like it actually. Um, they got hit by like all the water and then one of the cargo things got loose. So it actually made it in the film. It was an, it was an accident that they were able to record. And thankfully the accident wasn't, you know, the accident of the size of like, uh, um, uh, the twilight zone movie. But, uh, yeah, he said like there, somebody's harness, like had come, come undone. Uh, and, and <laughs> it, it could have been a very bad situation. The other one has to deal with, or at least another one, piece of trivia has to deal with um, the inspiration for the movie. So, of course, Jaws has a relationship with this movie, or this movie has a relationship with Jaws with a couple of nods, like the, you know, the the license plate in the, in the shark's mouth, things like that. But the inspiration that eventually led to the screenwriter making this movie was he lived at this house that was near the beach. Now this is going to be another reason for you guys not to be in, be anywhere near the ocean uh, <laughs> because uh, <laughs> the remains of a shark attack washed up next to his house. Wow. Hmm. While we were on trivia and it was just that yeah, when right. Thomas Jane was uh, swimming with the live shark, like they made him film it after all of his other stuff was filmed in case it went wrong. <laughs> 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 and I thought that was so amazing. They did the same thing in The Mist. All of his monster scenes were filmed at the end in case something happened to him as well. <laughs> That's awesome. God, Poor guy. I get, Those you monsters know what? were crazy. It, it's working for him. I mean, nothing's happened to him. So I think if they ever approach him and say, hey, we're going to film the scene with this uh, this bear first. I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, bro. We're going to film the rest of the movie. Then we're going to film the scene with me and the bear. That's how I would do it. <laughs> I would film that first because if you die, I have to reshoot everything because of all the bad publicity. So, so let's start with that. Make sure you make it. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so here's, here's something that they kind of addresses uh, one of Thomas's comments from earlier about, you know, the idea that the, the director wanted to, I guess, change some things with respect to horror with his, his entry into, or not entry, but with this, entry into it that Saffron Burroughs was supposed to live or at least there was a cut where she lives uh, but L.L. Cool J's character Preacher was actually supposed to die um, but you know there were there were some changes that that were made and and it involved like it basically involved L.L. doing so well I didn't mean to make that rhyme doing so well in his <laughs> role that they're like fuck it you know yeah the shark carrying him off in his mouth but no, fuck it. We're gonna let him live. <laughs> that Wait, so he was yeah. acting so well. They were like, they were like, we got something here. We gotta make. We gotta keep going. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, that that was pretty much it. Is like we can't kill him off. Let's let's do this. Um, and then the other one was uh oh Samuel Jackson as far as like playing that that role of of the uh, the financier the businessman. Uh, he was actually. The first role he was offered for this movie was actually Preacher, so it was LL Cool J's role. Oh. Interesting. Which, I don't think I would like that as much. I don't think I would either. No, that would be weird. Yeah, he's too intense for that. He's not likable enough in that kind of way. He's very likable, just not like in an endearing chef also, bird I, kind of way. Well, and I feel like his death would, uh, like that character's death, I don't think would be as interesting. 
like maybe I'm looking at it from a lens now, but like Samuel okay. being the one that just gets this like half a second death is amazing. Yeah, no, I totally agree. It, it's like for me, it's like in, if you've seen Children of Men, they kill off Julianne Moore really early on and you're like, oh, fuck, this movie's serious. And like, that's the same idea with Sam Jackson dying. I'm like, oh, they're they're not going to fuck around. They're willing to do anything. It could go anywhere. And on that note, that's one of the things I appreciate most about this. The deaths aren't drawn out. They're like they would be. Yeah. Like if, right. if you get hit by that shark, we're not going to sit here and have a good bye scene. You're not going to tell Tommy I love him. You know, like <laughs> I, I love that it's just gone and everybody's like, what well, the fuck? <laughs> well, even when the doctor gets his, his arm bitten, right? Everyone quickly responds. But the reason why he doesn't get killed is because the shark is is uh, is tied up. It's restrained. But I think one of the the interesting moments that that you have there is Thomas Jane immediately was like, I'm getting the shotgun. I'm going to blow this thing's fucking head off or blow its brain out, brains out. And Saffron Burroughs character is like, nope, I'm going to release it <laughs> because my science, our scientific discovery matters. And I feel as though that is that is a true response to this where somebody would have been working on this so long and they're not going to look at it as this is a, an unstoppable killing machine that's, that's confined. This is, this is my research. This is something I've been working on. And this is something that we need to preserve because it needs to be studied. Whereas Thomas Jane's response is, is simply no, the fuck we don't, we need to go ahead and get rid of it because shit's going to keep getting worse. Which again is is a great uh, keep I keep forgetting to call him Carter by his character's name, but Carter you know points out is like no we this is not a good situation this is dangerous. Can you remind like, me how, I mean, how just the, the same way as how the oh how the woman in the tower died because that was also a quick death was that in the helicopter scene? Hello. Yeah, uh, Brenda. I think yeah, Brenda. She dies because the helicopter crashes and then explodes and then i guess because of the 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 chaos and everything like that she dies because i i remember seeing her getting knocked back in the tower which mm -hmm. i felt bad for brenda brenda didn't do anything to deserve that she was just this nice sweet lady who worked up there and you know might want to get her freak on every now and then yeah i couldn't even remember that, that scene like to james's point that's just another quick death you know yeah, I think that's a case of the exact opposite, where it kind of mm -hmm. ruins the pacing. Like, that one should have been longer and had more impact, yeah. Hmm. Oh, well. Really? I think so. I don't know. Like, I, I thought I thought it worked because it, it immediately does that, for, at least for me. It does, it it sets, sets you up as like, oh, you know, you're in for a movie that, you know, some shit's going to go down. You know, there is no rescue. I mean, we 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 don't have a way for you to get rescued because now the communications that would call someone is gone because that tower has been blown up, or at least the, the devices up there have been blown up. All the fuel's been blown up. The little plane that would have taken you off of off of uh, this this platform is gone. Like, there's no way for you to escape easily. And all, not to mention the helicopter when it crashes, it hits like that that door that seals that tunnel or whatever it is yeah. that um that michael rapaport's character nice. references later he's like if the seal if the seal's busted like all that water is going to come in here and we're screwed I, th I think i said it wrong i don't mean that the death itself should have lasted longer i think i just wanted more out of her to like give a shit and hmm i don't know it's probably fine whatever <laughs> i guess we're not going to go back and remake it after all so well they made two sequels so maybe maybe there's better better deaths than those <laughs> yeah, but they waited a long time to make those sequels, man. Maybe they I were losing at, the IP I rights. Them, but I looked at... Oh, okay. But 2018, 2019, I think, is when the other ones came out. But I think it's it would have been, it would have been interesting to see them back-to-back -back because they left off on a great spot, which was LL asking, like, oh, are you sure there were only three sharks? That would have been a great, you know, a, a great cliffhanger, a, a great moment to kind of question if there were any more. Because I highly doubt that uh, Dr. McAllister was, I mean, we're, we've already seen that she wasn't fully uh, forthright and honest about everything. 
Uh, I'm pretty sure that she probably had another shark um, <laughs> that that may have been in 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 the wings, may have been <laughs> waiting somewhere. So you're yeah, saying there's she, a she's bunch like, of little like, sharks in the back. She's like Betty, Betty, Betty White. Yeah, 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 yeah. There we yeah, go. Yeah, exactly. I'm sorry, that, I didn't know you were going to go the there too. Thing. We both got there at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> But, but Saffron Burroughs isn't a monster like Betty White, so. No, this this is what happened. Brenda Brenda's death wasn't real. Brenda had actually <laughs> planned all this. Nice. <laughs> and she's off, she's off the facility with the other sharks. I like Brenda it. Brenda was the first shark who actualized as a human. Ooh. Yes. And then it was LL later in his music video. So I, I did see the, the two sequels, Deep Blue Sea 2 and Deep Blue oh, Sea 3. Oh, do tell. Um. And they're not great. They're, they're, uh, um, if you could imagine a story even less convincing than Deep Blue Sea itself, I mean, that's it's it has all the tropes of like shitty like sci-fi channel um, monster movies. So mm-hmm. it's it's they're not worth watching. It does it lacks the I don't know. There's a certain charm, uh, a certain innocence to Deep Blue Sea <laughs> that the so no LL Cool have. J. No, no, there are no <laughs> recurring characters. Um, which is also disappointing. So what's the point of having them live if they're not going to be in it? They should have uh, totally done the sequel thing. Like you like LL opens his fridge and there's a shark inside and it jumps out and grabs him because you always kill the survivor at the beginning of the next one. So that would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I would love in that. his bathtub. He's just in bath water and then there's a shark in there. You know, I come don't... on. You are completely missing the most obvious one. He gets a ring on his doorbell. He yes. goes to it and he says, who is it? And they're like, and Candy they Graham? Say, Candy Graham. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd watch that. Somebody just make a Candy Graham video. I'd, like a whole movie of just that. And then before, after LL opens the door, the shark is standing there. Yes. Standing there and says, my name is whatever Sharky McShark face. You killed my mother. Now prepare to die. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> Easily, come on! It's there. It's there. And just like that, Deep Blue Sea two and three look amazing. <laughs> 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 to hell with you! I'm writing that movie right now. Do it. I, I, I kept going on YouTube to find clips for the sequels, and I would type in Deep Blue, and then YouTube would auto fill in and search for Deep Blue something. So I listened to Breakfast at Tiffany's quite a few times before wow. I got back into the movie. Yeah, I feel so Excellent. bad for you right now. <laughs> I was fine with it. It's a good. <laughs> <laughs> but what about Breakfast at Tiffany's? Oh, <laughs> so have we run the course? Are we out of out of we out of notes? Yeah, I think so. I think we That's we. Good. we Covered it the same way we kind of covered Jurassic Park. It's, it's a lot of the same themes, which is why I like this movie. I love Jurassic Park, uh, and I love Jurassic Water Park just as much. <laughs> I really love that. <laughs> make me a poster. That I'll, make you, I'll make you a poster. <laughs> All right, so I guess that brings us to the part where we talk about movies people should watch if they liked this movie. Thomas, would you like to go first? Yeah, you got to watch your Sharknados. Your, uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, I, we talked about this during Lake Placid. It's it's a lot of those movies like Lake Placid. But I I I am not a fan of sharks. I don't like the animal. I don't like the movies. I don't like the hockey team. So go watch Free Willy and see an animal that matters. <laughs> nice. And I will say fuck Free Willy. Uh. <laughs> so before Don lists his nine thousand four hundred and eighty six movies. I'm just going with Anaconda because I think it would be an amazing double feature with this. There you go. (laughs) Wait, Don, you said fuck Free Willy. Is it because it's an allegory for emancipation? (laughs) No, I just think it's a C. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I just just think it's a dumb movie. You got it on record, James. Don thinks emancipation is dumb. No, I said Free Willy is a dumb movie. I thought you said free will. Uh, I'm just going to log out. Goodbye. (laughs) (laughs) Go on. Uh, All right, Don. What movies do you have? So you should have said 400 since there are over 400 species of shark. But anyway, um, I'm going to go with 9,400. I'm going to go with the obvious one. Okay. Which is Jaws. Uh, Let's see. Thomas mentioned Jurassic Park several times. So I'm going to kill that one off. We mentioned Lake Placid. So I will get rid of that. 
Yeah. And you we mentioned called... uh, Bad CGI Sharks, my favorite shark movie. Jaws 3D. Bad CGI Sharks. Bad CGI so, Sharks is a real movie. Oh, God. All right. So I'm going to throw in Tremors, Eight-Legged Freaks, The Mummy, Open Water, which I mentioned, Meg, we mentioned, Species, Splice, because, I, you know, we got to talk about the genitalia. Thankfully, Thomas Jane's character did not have sexual intercourse with any of the sharks, because that would have been weird. Who's That's to say? He, says, he was, but he's he was still spooning that shark himself. at the beginning like he had been there before. So, But do the genitals line up? What do All shark right. genitals look like? Get on Google. So the, no, I've I've seen them in science class. What uh, kind of right. science class were you in? The, the class you were teaching to those children on Catalina Island? Don, that's not appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, children, gather around. I want to show you what a shark vagina looks like. I was a chaperone, and yes, they did show. They did at the Marine Biology Facility, the Marine Research Center, or whatever it was. They did actually show you the genitalia of the different sharks. So I do know what a uh, you know shark hoo ha looks like, and uh, yeah. So there, that's a that's a fact. I that's something I know that I wish I didn't know. All right, and now the greatest movie that I would actually compare if I were to do a double feature, which I don't. James does the double features. If right. I were to do a double feature. I would do a double feature with snakes on a plane. That's a good one. That'd be pretty sweet. Just because of how ridiculous both these movies are, the the ridiculous premise matches up perfectly. And they both have Samuel Jackson in them. <laughs> well, there you go then. I like it. Well, cool. I suppose that brings it back to you, Thomas. Do you want to tell people where they can find your stuff or do you want to like stay a secret and hide from everyone? <laughs> Yeah, go visit theycantseeus.com. Cool. That's it. I can't believe that website was available, too. So happy to have it. Happy for you guys to check it out. That's amazing that that was available. You'd think there'd be a horror movie or something called that already, but nope, I got it. It's mine. Or even like it'd be like a really crazy porn site. That or like one of those like uh, the the hidden children. What You know those like sad kids who feel like their parents don't see them? One of those charities. Um Oh my god! I love. I'm serious. Like it's one of those like phrases where you're like, oh, that's that sounds sad. Um, anyway, but that would be that they can't see us dot org. This is they can't see us dot com. <laughs> and also check out they can't see us dot gov. You'll never believe what's happening over there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll wrap it up for this week before we go down that rabbit hole. As always, I am James Spada, and I'm Don Guillory. And we will see you next week here at the Necronama.com. Of course, James is probably going to have to clear off his Google history after he looks up all that shark genitalia. <laughs>